Welcome to Skyring. You're listening to The 100 Podcast, the show about CW sci-fi series, The 100. I'm Daniel Prime. Hallowed be his name. And I'm Olga, the one crew warrior. Yeah, you are. Today we are talking about our very first reactions to The 100 Season 7, Episode 2, entitled... The Garden. Ooh. 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 No longer Eden, although no. it seems that way at first. At first. Mm. So uh, if you're new to these videos, we basically, right after we watch the episodes on show night, we immediately sit down, we give you our first reactions. What do we think of the episode? What were, what are our percolating, our, our first feelings? Mm -hmm. And then- Not always right. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the following Monday, we put out a podcast on, the, on that Monday. It's an audio podcast. It's usually like, you know, an hour and a half. It's a lot more in depth. We read feedback from you guys on YouTube and so many other places and uh, go, you know, recap and all that stuff. But what were your initial impressions? Of this episode? Of the Skyring verse. I don't know. <laughs> I feel wishy-washy. I, dare I say I was almost bored by this episode? I saw some other people saying that too. I, I enjoyed the episode. I have some issues with it, but I want to start with the positive. Mm. So, I mean, I think I really like the three, the pair, I, I was going to say the pairing of uh, Dioza and Octavia, but I also but like Hope being the third pillar of that, right? Uh, I really think that that's yeah. an exciting dynamic that I love oh, having Hope as a character. I think Hope herself was the one of the most engaging parts of this episode. Adult Hope. B honestly, kind of both, I was right? going to say yeah. that all of the child actors that they got yeah. were solid. Yeah. Like, they were cute. They were precocious. Yeah. Yeah, and it's just yeah. like because because we were getting the adult one, the kid one was you know informing that character, and so hope throughout I think was a definite highlight. I also I mean I like stories when when they have episodes like this that are more focused and centralized, um, with just the two plot lines both on Skyring. I think that to me the issue is that if you're gonna have an episode that's that tight and focused, you have to make sure the plot lines involved are worth it. And I don't really feel like that necessarily is true. I liked the Octavia stuff more, but the stuff with uh, Hope, Echo, and Gabriel. Yeah. What did you feel about it? Again, I really liked adult Hope. Mm -hmm. They, like, you were concerned, and I was to a lesser degree concerned about amnesiac Hope. Yeah. And has like, let's hope this doesn't go too long because I don't know or understand her character. Well, like, I got a feel for a character. I like her yep. down for it. Yeah, and I think the actress did a really solid job. Right, like I'm sold yeah. on this character. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gabriel, like his like weird excitement about mm. the anomaly and like science was mm. cute in the premiere. It's it even was, cute at moments here. It is, but it's yeah. like, that's his like only mode. Yeah. And then Echo was honestly just like, there. Yeah. So that's, here's the thing about Echo is she gets a lot of shit, obviously, yes. uh, partially because of how her character has been written, partially because people just hate her with Bellamy and maybe a little bit of column A, a little column B, right? Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, I'd say you and I are more positive on Echo than the average bear, right? Yeah. You know, we've never been a fan of Bellamy and Echo, but I, when we get moments of Echo that's about Echo, I usually enjoy them. Mm hmm people have said for a while that they felt like Tasia's acting has been very stoic and one note and kind of empty. And I didn't really feel it. And I don't know if it's getting in my head a little too much that people say that. So I'll say this. Yeah. I don't engage as much in the fandom on Twitter. Yeah. Like I'll pop in, but you're the one who's like really talking for us yeah. there. I haven't really seen that critique. Mm-hmm. I felt that yeah. very intensely, and I would say independently. Maybe I've read it here and there, yeah. but again, I don't have that like truly in planted yeah. in my head. It was such a weirdly forced performance. Yeah, I don't. That I just don't even understand what was going on. Like, I generally think of her as a good actress, like, yeah. she, and and delivering even the stoicism well mm -hmm. and the anger well. I don't know if it was the lines or what. Like, it just wasn't working yeah. for me. Because I 
I think she did a very good job as the villain in season four. Mm -hmm. I think she, you know, I had no issues with it. And you not even guessed her villainousness, but like when she hurt Octavia, I felt her emotions about yeah. that. When she was going to commit Harry Carey or what it was, I don't know. What, seppuku? Seppuku, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I mean, I don't think that scene was great, but I think she delivered it well, right? Yeah. And even in season five, I, I remember like I liked her emotions against Clark when she was pissed. Like, like, like as far as performance, right? Yeah. Uh, so season six, she didn't just get all that much to do. I would but... say season six, I didn't have issues with the performance. I had issues with the writing. Yeah. And that's its own kind of thing. I would say here, I didn't have issues with the writing. I had issues with the performance. I guess, yeah, I was just surprised because I, again, I don't think of her as a bad actress and I wouldn't say that it was like horrendous here. No, it, it was just, just felt empty. weird. Yeah, yeah. It just felt kind of soulless. Yeah. Um, and even mm. the, it, the fact that it felt that way, even when she was playing opposite Hope crying and being such a sympathetic person that you can connect with, and she hugs her and she says some things that, like, I understand, but she says them very flatly even there, I feel like. So, like, we've seen Octavia who, like, struggles with her emotions and, like, I'm strong and all this. Like, we've yeah. seen her, even in this episode, like, break down and, mm. like, push her stoicism aside and let like let herself be soft. Yeah. That isn't really what I saw here. Yeah, because I feel like the point of this episode as as far as that plot line goes, mm -hmm. right? As far, the point of the character arc of that plot line, right? It was supposed to be oh Hope doesn't like Echo because of what she grew up learning about Echo. Now Echo connects with her and Hope realizes that they're in it together now. And maybe she prejudged Echo or something. Yeah. Right? I do not think they succeeded in that story. No. Um, I think that um, I like a lot of the world building, but it all comes back to the fact that like, yeah, so much of this episode is about Hope, Echo and Gabriel, three characters that are just not you know, in any way close to our main group. characters, right? Yeah it's, yeah, it's a strange choice as far as like, you know, Echo is not a fan favorite. Gabriel is super exposition man and he does his best that he can with it. But let's be real, almost every line he says is about exposition or figuring out something scientific. Yeah, and he's and, new too. Yeah, and Hope's brand new. So I'm like, you know, somebody tweeted, because I was saying like, it feels so weird to be stuck with these three people. Someone's like, well, you know, Bob took some time off and this probably would have been Bob here. And but I'm like, but there are so many other options. Like if you threw in Raven or Murphy, like it's one other person that we actually, you know, have a strong. Kind of, Nyla. Along, yeah. An ongoing connection with. Just someone. Nyla's who, not a good option. I guess you're right. <laughs> But then I would be down for like a Nyla Echo thing, I guess. Mm. But that's its own canon. Yeah. No, I don't know. I'm just. I just needed some sort of center of a character that I re like. That's the thing is like Octavia was the center of this episode. And so that, those parts really worked because we really, you know, have a long history mm -hmm. with Octavia. But another issue, if you're ready to yeah. like move on, is the prisoner. Did we get his name? Uh, I don't remember. See, this is off the cuff. We're yeah. not researching yeah. shit. But, like, I don't really like the fact that he's just, like... Completely crazy? Yeah. Like, yeah. I get why he would be. <laughs> I get it. But throwing, again, because he's interacting with these, like, three oddballs. Yeah. And he is himself, like, an oddball. Mm. And unnamed. I have no connection to him. He's just, like, inconvenient. He's, a he's part of the plot. He's, yeah. pl he's a plot device. Yeah. And I don't like that like that yeah. to me just added to the like well and so let's say weird our... i don't know yeah. multi-level like this episode wasn't weighed fairly yeah it was like you have the powerhouses of dioza and octavia over here yeah. and i would rather just watch that yeah. actually like fully emotionally develop and i yeah. felt like i was just getting like pieces and right as i was like fully in it i'm like whisked away yeah. into plot city well that's the thing is i think that the reason it's way that way is that you're supposed to be as interested in learning about the lore as you are in watching the octavia stuff mm -hmm. which I, I mean i don't i don't feel like i learned anything from the lore in this episode that like was a big surprise really yeah. like we got the name of the faction the disciples they're like a warrior group um they believe in anton uh, I think it was Elmer. Anders. <laughs> Anders. <laughs> I knew it was an A name. <laughs> Elmer was a joke, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Like, they're very religious. They're a warrior mm -hmm. cult. If you're not yeah. productive enough, you get sent to a prison yeah. planet. 
Yeah, which I mean, that's makes you totally productive once you get back. <laughs> I mean, that I, I think there's interesting aspects to it, and but it's like, yeah, we could have already guessed, we already did guess that their helmets protect them from the memory loss issues. Yeah. Um, I think that the most interesting surprise thing, I guess, was the mind drive and the fact that they used that to get a little bit of Becca. That was kind of cool. Um, that obviously but Becca what was did very it serve. Well, I think it set up stuff that we're gonna see, right? Because it... I think that it clearly is that Becca is aware of the whole black hole anomaly thing, right? And so I think that's gonna play an important role into the prequel episode and all. Uh, even the, yeah. the even the device of the mind drive, I think, could be how they do the prequel episode, right? Mm, um, that makes sense. The memory drive that makes I, sense yeah. of like the. The thing of we record memories, yeah. we can watch them back, which we I know we knew, but yeah. I kind of I'll be honest, I forgot about that. Well, a we we, bit. <laughs> we never watched them back. I mean, they never showed it to us like that before. Not like that. I yeah. mean, we saw the like you're right. We never saw it from through their eyes. We yeah. just saw a lab video of Josephine being brought back to yeah. life. That wasn't through the eyes of. Yeah, well, I mean one that's of the, the thing primes. that I think that yeah. I mean I I will say I love the fact that I'm pretty sure that in our podcast last year I was like these are basically like a black box on an airplane. You did say yeah. that. <laughs> you did. Um. Yeah. So I mean I think that's interesting. But then of course we have the like I felt like it was super contrived that. Gabriel finds out this thing. He puts down the iPad thing for no real reason and then runs outside looking for I need for a-, a pen! <laughs> Who has a pen? I yeah. need a pen! And I'm like, okay, he didn't actually need a pen. So it's completely like, they were just like, how do we make it so that he stupidly leaves this here? Because if you have an iPad, you watch the video, you see, okay, he tapped this one. Now I tap this one. Pause, now go there. Okay, now I tap this one. <laughs> and, and why not just say, I have it. Let's go down. He puts it down to go get them yeah. to bring them downstairs. Yeah. No, they didn't do that. A pen, I need a pen. <laughs> yeah, because that's the other thing is, wouldn't you rush out with the pad to be like, look, guys, look what I found. I Maybe mean, it's yeah. a little clunky, yeah. whatever. At least him being like, huh, put it like just... Yeah. It was stupid. Okay, we're being a. I know we're being a little. I know. I know. I just like. I freaking. I don't know. I know I'm being negative. Like again, I really did like the Dioza and Hope stuff and Hope and Octavia stuff. I liked uh, the stuff of like Dioza and Octavia wrestling. Of like, I broke this helmet for you. Now. there is another element there of like, doesn't make sense that Octavia really understands Bellamy's motives if she's willing to, to leave, leave hope. hope. Yeah, so that's the thing is, I, I in theory, I like a lot about the Octavia storyline, right? Because mm-hmm. I think she plays so well off yeah. of Dio's. I think they have amazing chemistry. I think the writing was really strong for both of them. I think, you know, as far as like dialogue and stuff goes, I think that there was conflict there that they dealt with. Um, I think it really, really comes down to, as my issue here, is the fact that she is so willing to just leave hope. And it doesn't, and yeah. while also saying, hey, because of hope, I now understand what it was like for you, Bellamy, to watch over me, even though you, Bellamy, would never have left me, as far as when I'm a little kid. I yeah. mean, obviously. But, like, you stood by me. But the yeah. thing is that I think they did a pretty good job of showing Mm -hmm. is that like she's lying to herself Mm -hmm. a bit about like no I'll be back in time I'll be back quickly you I'll bring back like everyone and and it's for hope I'm doing Mm -hmm. this for her yeah like it's it's still selfish it's still like I think my problem is that this is supposed to be like you know like whatever six or something years Mm -hmm. go by of her living here helping raise hope and it's supposed to she's writing this beautiful note to Bellamy right and it's supposed to be she's evolved she's grown she learned from her mistakes and she's becoming a better person and she's finally you know like going through her transformation right but at the same time she's being selfish and that to me is the thing that I don't like, it, yeah. Like it, she's she's she isn't one hundred percent being like I'm gonna be a great parent. She's still putting her need to go and make amends with Bellamy over. Like that's why the thing is, if the episode culminated in her finally getting the option to go mm-hmm. and then saying, you know what, hope matters more. Yeah, that would have been the arc that makes sense, right? Because like that instead would've... of Dioza smashing the helmet, if Octavia like the last second chose to throw it in to... the ocean, yeah. yeah. Like that, that would show an actual arc for her character. Having somebody else get in the way and like, and stop you from being able to do that. 
that's not an arc. Like, I mean, like, she kind of, you know, she, I guess the arc is that she accepts her fate at that she point. She stops trying to go through after yeah. that. And they spend at least several more years yeah. just together as a family. Yeah. But it's just. But it's not the same. Yeah. It's not the same. Yeah. I, I guess it, it's just, it's so close mm, yeah. that it, it, that's why it bugs me. That's the problem that I'm having. It feels like there are so many moments that are just like a few steps away from being perfect or the way I want them. Yeah. <laughs> right now, because we're in the last season, everything, every moment, every second matters yeah. because this is like our last impression of the hundred. Mm -hmm. And that's why I feel like these like small nitpicky things of like, Octavia's choices and Echo's like interaction with Hope yeah. like when they're just a, even a little bit off it resonates more yeah yeah so and especially it, as people who are you know spending hours a week looking over this stuff yeah I mean sure. we're yeah. like diving in deep yeah. maybe a casual fan is like this is great this is exactly what yeah. I want but we haven't been that kind of fan yeah. for a long time <laughs> <laughs> one thing I just remembered that I want to make sure we touch on before we end mm -hmm. out here is I think one major revelation is that why uh, Hope stabbed Octavia. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you could guess that it had it wasn't really about killing her, but like, yeah, the specifics of this is how she made it so that they could lock on her location, and then they took her away. And you have to stab someone deep mm -hmm. so that they won't be turned inside yeah. out so yeah. now you set that up i want to see someone get turned inside out <laughs> yeah that would be cool that would be very cool yeah i i am interested though because so you know i went into this season i think when we did our like predictions audio podcast a mm -hmm. few weeks back uh we both were like pretty sure octavia is actually dead like we would see her past or whatever yeah. and time flip-flops but ultimately she would die from wrong the, yeah <laughs> die from the hope stabbing but that does not seem likely anymore i'm okay uh, with that yeah well, we'll see what what do you want from octavia's story because she just did an inter marie just did an interview being like i'm basically very happy with where it ended out and man i want i guess I just want her to, I guess, just be happy, question mark. That's Even the thing where I'm like, I am like, because of season five, I'm like, is she one of the characters that deserves a happy ending? I don't know. Uh, like, ex but also she already like attempted at the end of season five to be like going out guns blazing to protect her brother. So it's like. Maybe she just uh, deserves another chance at peace with yeah. like. Hope and maybe Bellamy. Hey, yeah, and we'll see. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, at the end of the day, it's so weird that I'm just like, I just want every, I want a happily ever after. I know mm. it's not going to happen, but can't I want it? <laughs> you can can't want I? whatever you want. Thank we you. We have hope. And on that note. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, if you feel differently about this, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to read your feedback during were the audio we, podcast. Were we too negative? Were we not negative enough? You uh, tell us. Something. Those are the <laughs> options. I yeah, guess. that's it. <laughs> <laughs> any theories you have, anything like that, we'd love to hear. Also, if you want to tweet at us at the 100 podcast on the Twitters or send us an email at the 100 pod at gmail.com. Lots of great ways to connect with us. Thank you guys so much for watching and may we meet again. May we meet again. Mm -hmm.